until she had a son. And they named him Jesus. I said this is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And a Sunday where we celebrate love. And that baby is love. In fact, this season might be called the season of the baby. The season of the birth of the Christ child. And yet in one sense, it's the season of spice. You see, Jesus came and when he did, he spiced up our lives a bit. You see, he calls us the salt of the earth, just as he is the salt of our lives. He adds that something special, that salt to our lives. <laughs> The world has been a far better place, and we have been a better people as children of God <coughs> since the coming of the Christ child. And can you imagine if we get excited, how excited Mary must have been? Not just the normal excitement that a woman or a mother has with the birth of a baby. We know that's an exciting time in the lives of not just the mother, but the father and the grandparents, all the rest. That baby's birth is such an exciting time. It's such a time when we feel love. And we really should feel that love of the birth of Christ within our hearts on a daily basis. So, yes, Mary had to feel extremely excited, not just as a mother, but somebody who had had a glimpse of the future. Imagine that. She looks at that baby and she sees the future. She knows what that child will become. And that night, the night of the birth of Christ, must have been something else. That year in Mary and Joseph's life was really something else. Both of them had been visited by angels. They had all kinds of events that would lead them to Bethlehem. They had the disappointment of not finding a place to stay, where there was no room in the inn. <coughs> They had the pain and the anguish, the sweat and the tears of a child being born in a place like a barn. Then they had the angel choirs that were singing at his birth. What a joyful time that had to be. And then that magic moment that moment when Mary got to hold that baby in her arms. But yet there was more to come. And I'm sure that it caught both Mary and Joseph to surprise when the shepherds nervously bumbled their way into the stable and they told an unlikely story of the angels 
who had visited them in the dead of night with an amazing revelation about the birth of the Savior. If it had been anybody else but Mary and Joseph, they would have thought the shepherds were simply crazy. But you see, Mary and Joseph already knew. And I imagine, I just imagine, that in her joy, in the awe of that magic moment of the night, she might have had the ultimate gift, the gift of sharing, the gift of sharing with the shepherds, and in my imagination, as young as she was, some scholars think she might have been 11 or 12 or 13, a very young girl, not more than 16 for sure. She had to be scared, and she had to be awed. And then she looked lovingly and knowingly at the shepherds, and she probably said something like this. Would you like to hold me? Would you like to hold the baby? Here it was. The promised Savior. And they reached out and touched him with love of that newborn child. They held him close and they looked at that peaceful little face and they were never the same again. Boy, it wouldn't have been great to have been there ourselves at that time. But again, maybe it's really better to go there by faith and imagination. Sometimes you can speculate a little and see more than if you were actually physically there. It's kind of like trying to understand the whole concept of the theory of incarnation. That's a toughie. But you see, I know it's not just a theory. I know it's true. I know Christ came, and I know that He is for real. I know He was, and that He is the Son of God, and that He put on human flesh, and He became one of us, you and me, a part of us. Think of that, a part of each one of us. And I know that He is the incarnation of God. God with us. That's what the name Jesus says to us. But you know, sometimes I have a hard time getting the skimpy little brain line around that whole big theory of the incarnation. How do you describe and believe and make it believable about that theory about Jesus becoming fully human, just like you and me, and yet fully divine at the same time? How do you describe that? How can that be? So it's easier for me to get my mind around the concept of a baby, something I can hold on to, that baby. And you know, I think that God realized that. I think that's why Christ came, to be born as an infant, to be born of a man and a woman in the normal way, in the natural way, in a specific time at a specific place so there was never any question about him being fully 
human to be a real human being. You see, Joseph and Mary didn't find Jesus in a basket on the doorway in the morning when they got up. He didn't just appear out of the wilderness as an apparition with no past, no history, no family, and no connection, more importantly, to you and I. The miracle of Christmas, the miracle of Christmas, is that God gave himself to you and to me for Christmas greatest gift of all. And it came wrapped in swaddling clothes. Not in colorful paper with glittering rapid ties. This baby, this infant whose birthday that we're going to celebrate in a week with all the festivities and all the gifts that we have, this baby is the embodiment of our long-awaited, long-needed salvation. God came to dwell among us. And he came first as an infant because that's something we can hold on to. The idea of that baby in the manger. He came to bring himself to us. He came to give us the gift of salvation for our lives. He came so that we would have a solution for our greatest need. You know, we've all had feelings of hollowness and emptiness. Feelings of inadequacy. All kinds of bad feelings about life and about ourselves. And most of us have tried, one way or another, to fill those emptiness within us in one way or another. And nothing seems to work. And we have a need as a human condition to fill that emptiness when it occurs. And that's why Christ came. As Joyce said this morning, prayer works. Prayer makes us aware of Christ within us and God walking within our lives. And through the birth of a child who was laid in a manger, God proclaims the good news. Christmas tells us who we are. And it tells us that we are loved. We are the person to whom God sent His very own Son. The Son of God is what gives meaning to our lives. And that's why I think Mary, when she said these imagined words, would you like to hold it? you like to hold the baby? I think that's why those words hold so much meaning. Because you see, when we hold Christ, when we hold Him in our hearts, the Son of God is able to heal those inner scars and those inner sores and transform our very own lives into His image. That's the good news. Jesus 
Christ, the Son of the living God, came as an infant to be one of us so that we might be set free. Free from sin so that we can enter into a new life. A new life with Him. And all we have to do, my friends, all we have to do is hold the baby. Hold the baby in our hearts. The Lord of all heaven and earth has come into our world like a tiny baby. And that's the good news. There's a cause for celebration. And we will do that next Saturday night and next Sunday morning. And you can celebrate by simply holding the child Jesus in your heart and letting His love be the seasoning of your life. The salt, the seasoning of your life. That seasoning that recreates us in His image. Would you like to hold it? Would you like to hold the baby? Let God give you the gift that He has prepared for you. You can hold Him now. And you can hold Him forever.